Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight, in Grade 5, in Module 3, in Lesson 9, we are adding fractions to make like units numerically. So we've done a lot of work with graphical models in the last uh, few lessons at the be since the beginning of this module, but today we're going to making, be making the transition to doing that numerically rather than doing that through models. So less of our unit boxes, less of our number lines, and more just thinking through um, through uh, common denominators and like factors and things like that. So let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's, pro tonight's homework. Problem number one. Directions are make like units, then add. And our first problem is two-ninths plus five-six. So we don't have like units right now. These are ninths and these are six, so we can't just add them straight across. So we have to figure out, hey, how can we decompose these into like units? So in my thinking, I want to look at each of these denominators, nines, ninths, and sixths. And I want to think, let's see, if I skip count by nines, do I get to any numbers that are also divisible by six? In other words, that any number that has both of these numbers is a common factor. So let's see, nine obviously doesn't work. How about 18? Because nine times two is 18. And hey, I'm noticing right away, six times three is 18. So I bet we could make these into eighteenths. Let's see if that would work. Let's see, two ninths. I'm going to do that over here. Let's see, two ninths. If we multiplied two ninths, let's see, two ninths times two, nine times two, and then two times two, that's way another way of expressing two ninths, and that would get us to eighteenths, right? And let's see, uh, let me add here our other one. Let's see, our other fraction. We started with 5, 6. And what would we need to multiply the numerator, numerator and denominator of that fraction to get to 18? Well, let's see, we said 6 times 3 is 18. So 5 times 3 is 18. I think that would do it. Let's see if it works. 2 times 2 up here. 2 times 2 is 4 in our numerator, and then 9 times 2 in our denominator is 18, and that's what we were looking for. Awesome, and that makes sense, because it looks like these are two equivalent fractions, right? 2 ninths and 4 eighteenths are the same fraction. They're equivalent. It's like if we took our little ninths of a pizza and we just divided each of them in half, we'd have four of them now, and they'd be half as big. They'd be out of eighteenths and not ninths. And let's see over in this one. Let's see, this other fraction... 5 times 3 in the numerator here is 15. And let's see, 6 times 3, that's 18. All right, and now we've got 18 which is awesome. Let's see, 4 plus 15. 4 plus 15 equals 19 18 And I'm noticing something right away, which is this should be a little bit bigger than 1. If we were to do that in our old number bond system, right, we would say, oh yeah, 18 18 is the whole. And let's see, we, if we had 18 of them here, and we started with 19, we know we would have one other one left over. So I'm going to express that as one whole, that's this part, right, and 1 18th. So 19 18th is the same as 1 and 1 18th. Now I want to, I want to just pause for a second and say, if you had not, uh, had not figured out that 18th, 18th was the best possible landing point for your denominator, and you had just gone ahead and multiplied. Let's say you could have done this problem. You could, I'm going to do it in red here. You could have said, well, let's see, I'm just going to multiply both of my... I'm going to multiply this first part by the second unit. In other words, I'm going to multiply both parts by 6. And then I'm going to take that second one, 5 6 and I'm going to multiply that by 9s. Right. This is essentially what we did a couple, you know, last week or a few lessons ago. Right. When we did our um, our unit models, we basically we would have divided in nines vertically, and then we would have divided in six horizontally, and we would have ended up in fifty fourths. Now this is all doable, right? This is twelve fifty fourths plus looks like forty five fifty fourths. This is all going to work. Okay, these are not, this is not a mistake. This is not as elegant, perhaps, as what we've done over here by finding that we don't need to deal with such a huge denominator as 54, so we can deal with 18. But this is not inaccurate, and you will end up with, uh, with this, the correct answer here. In fact, let's just carry this all the way through. We've got 12 54 plus 45 54. So let's see, that's 12 plus 45 is 57 54. And I'm noticing something, again, just like I did here, which is that 54 fifty-fourths is a whole. And then we would have, let's see, it looks like 3 left over, so we'd have 3 fifty-fourths left. So that's the equivalent of 1 and 3 fifty-fourths. 
And then I'm noticing something again, which is that I could simplify this fraction. The 3 divided by 54, I could divide both numerator and denominator by 3, and I would get, magically, 1 18th. So, doing it this way is a little more complicated in that the numbers get more difficult, for certain, for sure, but it's not inaccurate. You'll work your way down to an answer like this, which is exactly an equivalent fraction to what we worked uh, it in the blue here, and then we'll work our way down to pull out our whole unit and get our fractional unit, and then in this case we'll have to simplify our fractional unit, our improper fraction, into 1 and, and 1 18th. That's what this would be, 1 and 1 18th. We'll get there eventually. It just means that our route is more difficult because we have to deal with a lot bigger numbers. We have to deal with bigger, bigger multiplication here. We have to deal with um, bigger numbers and smaller fractional units here, 54ths instead of 18ths. We have to deal with a more complicated uh, improper fraction here. We have to deal with, uh, with simplifying our fraction down here in a way that we didn't have to over here. Um, but it's not inaccurate. So I just want to say, if you go through that exercise of trying to find a, a common factor for your two denominators, and you just don't get to one, and you want to just do it the old style way, you can absolutely do it that way. Just be, pay attention because your math is going to be a little more difficult to do. Okay? Let's take a look at one from tonight's homework. Now we've got three different add-ins here. Let's see. The directions are the same. Make like units and then add. And this time we've got fifths, fourths, and tenths. Well, one thing I know for sure is we can't just add across because these are different units. We can't add apples, oranges, and bananas and just say, oh, it's an apple and banana thing. Okay? So we've got to figure out what the common units are. And so I want to think about these three numbers and think, is there a number that all three of these are common fa are factors of? And so, let's see. 10 seems pretty friendly because 10 and 5, I know my math facts that 2 times 5 would be 10. So that works. But unfortunately, it doesn't work for the 4, right? 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 4 is 12, and we kind of miss. So I'm thinking, hmm, what if we went to 20? If we went to 20, let's see, 5, oh yeah, that would work, because 5 times 4 is 20, and that would work for this denominator, because 4 times 5 is 20, and that would work for this, because 2 times 10 is 20, so I think 20ths are going to be our, I'm just going to put that off to the side here, I think that, oops, I think that 20ths are going to be our denominator. Let's put that in a little bit of notation. Now the question is, what would I what would I need to do to each of these fractions to get them into twentieths? Let's see. So two fifths. What would I need to do to two fifths to get them into twentieths? Well, I know I need to multiply the denominator by four, and so that means I have to, in order word, in order for it to be equivalent, I have to multiply the numerator by four, and I think we're done with that one, right? Let's see. What about the second fraction? We had one fourth. Let's see. Let's see. Make that a little neater. And what do we need to multiply 1 fourth by to get it into 20 So Let's see, 4 times, let's see, I think it would be 4 times 5, right? That would make 20. So then we have to multiply the numerator by 5, and then we have another equivalent fraction. And then for our last one, we've got 1 tenth. Well, what do we need to do to a tenth to make it a 20th? Well, we need to multiply it by 2, right? And if we do that down there, we've got to do the same thing in the numerator to make an equivalent fraction. And I think that our work is mostly done here. Let's see. 2 times 4 is 8 twentieths for our first fraction, plus 1 times 5 is 5 twentieths for our second fraction, and 1 times 2 is 2 twentieths for our third fraction. And let's see, can we add those up together now? Well, we have the same units. Let's see, twentieths, twentieths, and twentieths. 8 plus 5 plus 2 is 15 twentieths. And that's it except that we noticed something. We noticed that 15 twentieths, we could simplify that. Is there some number that we could divide the numerator and denominator by to simplify this fraction? And I'm noticing right away that these are all multiples of 5, so I think we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. And our answer... Doo -doo -doo is three-fourths. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Khan Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.